Linux runs everywhere, on your phone, the subway station, and even on your toaster. But did you know that PDF files were Turing complete and that you can run Linux on them too? Well, you can, as long as you're using the right kind of PDF viewer. This is possible because the PDF file format actually supports JavaScript and even has its very own standard library full of APIs that let you do things like audio video playback, 3D rendering, and even the ability to make HTTP requests all from a literal PDF file. Now, most PDF viewer programs don't support JavaScript, or they certainly don't support executing JavaScript by default, because obviously that's a huge security concern. You can pull off a lot of nonsense on someone's computer with malicious JavaScript that is not being sandboxed correctly. So that's where Chrome, or the Brave browser in my case, comes in. It has a JavaScript engine, and it supports opening PDF files. Now, something like this could probably be made for Firefox as well, because it also has its own JavaScript engine and its own PDF engine, but the developer of this project was just targeting the Chrome browser. Now, the Linux kernel is, of course, written in C and not JavaScript, so to get this working, the developer of this project used an older version of mscripten, which these days is used to compile C and C++ code into WebAssembly, but the version that they decided to use targets asm.js, which is a subset of JavaScript that C programs can be compiled to. So with this, he compiled a modified version of TinyEmu and embedded it within a roughly six megabyte PDF file that has a front end for interacting with this TinyEmu system. Now, this is obviously a very, very small Linux distribution. And as you can see, the kernel version is only 4.15 and we're using GCC version 7.3 and this Linux distro also ships with BusyBox for its core utilities. That's right, folks, this is not a GNU slash Linux distribution because GNU is too bloated for where we're going today. So once this finishes booting up, uh, we're gonna go ahead and play around in this crazy distro. As you can see, it is very, very slow to boot up. Uh, you can see the speed of the system here is only a few hundred kips per second because of the many, many layers of abstraction that are going on here. But really, this is mostly due to the fact that the Chromium PDF engine has its JIT compiler disabled. That's the main thing that's apparently destroying this distro's performance. And I've seen in the issues of this GitHub repo that if you compile this for Firefox, it actually does run a whole lot faster. But like I said, the developer decided to only target Chromium browsers for this particular project. And I also think Adobe Acrobat uh, might have the potential to be faster because as far as I know, it's the only PDF program that actually implements the full JavaScript library. So it would be interesting to see what kind of fuckery could be done with running Linux inside of a PDF there. Um, so needless to say, there's a few limitations that we have with this uh, Linux distro. Um, there's also no networking in this because network requests are not something that are available inside of Chrome's PDF engine. You know, maybe that would be possible inside of Adobe Acrobat. Uh, this here is the virtual keyboard for interacting with the TTY. So I could click on L and then S and then hit enter to run an LS command here in the root directory. And you see that this just simple command by itself already takes several seconds to execute. Um, but it's faster to just type here for your keyboard inputs, right? So we could do, um, well, why don't we CD back and then for some reason, if I hit enter here, it doesn't actually enter the command into the TTY. I don't know if there's some like limitation here with that. Um, obviously this person has a level of PDF knowledge beyond what I have, but you can click on this enter button here and then it'll CD back into uh, the real root directory. And like if we do an LS of what's in here, you can see that there's not quite as many uh, folders, or at least you will see when it finishes loading. Um, there's not quite as many folders as there are in um, some more modern Linux systems, like you can just CD to your own root directory and see how many folders you've got. 
And if we go into Etsy, for example, and we do an LS in here, you can see that there really is not a whole lot that's uh, going on. And occasionally we'll get some of these errors here, um, but that doesn't seem to affect command input. So yeah, literally all that's in our Etsy folder is just our FS tab, group, and the password file. So let's take a look at what kind of specifications we're working with here. Uh, I'll do a, oh, I didn't type that right. You also have to click on the backspace, by the way, if you end up typing a command wrong. So I'm gonna run a DFH to get an idea of what the disk size is here. And it takes a minute for it to update. It has to print line by line. Uh, but it looks like the root directory is about one gigabyte in size. Now, that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but you really have to consider what the write speeds are here, because you can see that the whole system is only running at a few hundred kips per second. Um, but if I do something like ddif equals dev u random and the output file equals random write, and we'll do a byte size of 1K, and we'll do a count of 900. So basically, um, what this command is going to do, and I'll probably just record this in real time so that you guys can see, but basically, um, this is using dev u random as our input file, so that basically generates randomness, not as good as what you would want for cryptography, but it's good enough for our own uses here. And it's going to write 900 kilobytes of just random noise to this output file, random write. Now, those of you at home know that 900 kilobytes is absolutely not a whole lot of data. Um, it's basically put our system into full throttle here as far as write speeds are concerned. And it's still going. It's still writing the 900 <laughs> KB of random data to this output file. And it'll be done any second now, maybe any minute now. Okay, and you can see now that I went ahead and sped the video up because even I can't ramble long enough for this thing to write, that it took 114.9 seconds to write 900 KB. So we have write speeds of roughly 7.8 kilobits per second or kilobytes per second. Yeah, unfortunately you can't get a whole lot done uh, with this distro, it really is just a proof of concept. Now, if you're wondering where this data is actually being written to, because if I do a quick ls, you can see that uh, it really did just create that file inside of my Etsy folder and uh, probably should have CD'd back so that it wouldn't have to print out all of these different files and folders, but you can see random write uh, is right there. But this is basically, I'm pretty sure that this is just filling up your browser's cache, especially um, this particular file here, because this is actually what's opened up on the developer's website. So this is linux.pdf running from uh, linux.doompdf.dev. And that's actually a reference to another project that the developer of this um, created which is running the Doom game inside of a PDF. Yeah, of course, that's something you can do as well. So I'm pretty sure that this one gigabyte disk size limitation is just to avoid causing any issues in your browser by using up all of his cache. Now, this is actually a 32-bit Linux system that I'm running here. So you could technically have up to, I think it's four gigabytes of disk space there. Uh, and you could have obviously a whole lot more if you decided to run 64-bit Linux inside of a PDF, which is possible according to the dev, but it's a whole lot slower. Uh, if you actually wanted to build and run that yourself, whether you wanted to build the 64-bit or the 32-bit um, one, 
you can download everything from this repo and then run this, um, or I think you gotta create a Python environment first, but anyway, you run this um, build script and then you change the bits here at the top from 32 to 64 bit. And you can actually see if we scroll through here that, um, yeah, here it is. So it actually builds an Alpine Linux distro inside of a PDF uh, file for you. Um, but for whatever reason, I wasn't able to uh, boot it up. I was getting some errors in my browser and I was using Chrome and Brave, you know, Chromium based browsers uh, like the dev told us to, and I just couldn't get it running. So that's why I'm using the 32 bit version here. Um, and unfortunately, another thing I couldn't figure out with this is how to get it running with a persistent file system. So this is a live OS right now. And obviously, as you saw, you can create files, you can write to them, and then you can read them out later. But when you reboot this, all of the changes are gone. And that's even the same thing if you build your own distribution inside of the PDF using um, what he gave us. So if you could figure out how to build this with persistent storage, then there's another kind of you know, meme or jokey usage you could have for this as a really inefficient hiding in plain sight communication method. So what you could basically do is um, let's, let's touch a file, right? Let's create this message file. And then we'll echo, some backspaces. So we'll echo out just some stuff into this um, file and uh, message. That's what I called it. Right, so you could do this. And assuming that when you shut down the distribution, it's able to save the message, you could then send this to somebody else. And as far as anyone who's listening on the wire goes, like anyone who's spying on your communications, to them, they're just gonna see you sending a PDF file. And if this person who's watching your communications back and forth decides to actually open up the PDF in a regular ass PDF viewer, this is what it's gonna look like. You see, it's not interactive at all. It's basically just a text document as far as, um, the Atril document viewer is concerned with whatever its default settings are. Um, now, of course, Chrome browsers are going to be able to open this just fine. Uh, and it's not a very obscure piece of software. I'm sure that a lot of people out there, maybe even the majority of people out there, use just the Chrome browser or whatever their browser is as a standalone PDF viewer. So, you know, maybe you encrypt the file that you're writing the secret message to inside of this Linux distro, and then you share the password with your recipient in advance so that they can see what it is. But then all we've done at that point is reinvent a much less efficient and secure version of end-to-end -end encrypted messaging. Uh, so yeah, this is um, pretty much a hobby project, and that's not a bad thing at all, um, especially since the person who created this entire project and the Doom PDF project is a high school student. So very, very brilliant. I mean, this young developer is definitely going to do great things in their life. So give their Git repo a star, follow this person's work in the future. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm. And check out my website, base.when, where you can buy my awesome merch and accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% discount store wide when you pay a Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.